YOLO composing gloves here and today I'm going to show you how to record with ASIO audio. I'm going to call it ASIO audio. It's ASIO audio. And yes, you can do this with OBS. It's a thing. Apparently it's been around for about a year. I wish I'd known about this sooner. Sure did make my life way better. So to do this, all you got to do is download a plugin that was developed to do this. So if you have OBS, you're probably missing this tab and you're missing the ASIO source input. That's because you need this plugin. So go to the internet type in ASIO, you, ASIO plugin for OBS. This will pop up and I'll put a link in the doobly-doo. And in it here, you see there's like a tutorial on it, but what you want is in the releases. Oh, one thing I need to point out, this has only, this plugin is designed for Windows and has been tested on Windows 10 64-bit. So just so you know, it might or might not work on your system. I'm sure it'll be updated at some point and you'll have it for a couple more OSs. But currently, that's where it is. If you want it to be compatible, you can do the code yourself, I guess. So we go to releases, and then under releases, we have the ASIO plugin, and we just want the installer, so you can just download the installer right here. So once you've downloaded that and installed it just by running the executable, I believe you need to open, uh, close and open OBS again, and you should have this ASIO tab here. Now go to settings, and in settings, we need to set a couple things up. So first you need to select the device you want. Not all devices support multiple programs running ASIO at the same time. So I have a Focusrite 18i20. It can open up a DAW and this and have no problem whatsoever, but some won't. So this may not even be an option if you don't have that. But anyways, assuming you have no problem opening up multiple programs or um, so you can have ASI audio running in a way that makes sense with this program, we have a sample rate option and a data format. Make sure they match whatever your interface is putting out. And then you must have a buffer size selected. So the buffer size basically says how much time it has to process your audio. It's really more of a, it's a size of how much information can fit there. So if your computer cannot keep up with your audio, you're gonna get lacks, lots of cracks and pops. But if you make the buffer size really big, you'll get a high latency. And so if you're having issues with cracks and pops, make the buffer size bigger, that issue will go away. Um, but if there's too much latency, you can you can just make it shorter. I'm running at 224, I've had no issues, but your results may vary depending on your gear. So then you hit okay. And once you're all done, you've got that all set up, you need to add an ASIO input. So here I'm gonna right click and go to add and there's an ASIO input option now. So you click that and you can add it. I'm just gonna leave the name as is and it's gonna ask you to select your device. So we selected this device and then you get two channels. Now in their tutorial thingy on, the, on GitHub, they have a picture with like all eight channels. I don't know exactly how to get that, but I do know how to do this. And at the end of that page, they talk about just opening up multiple two channel things. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. So you can come in here and you see you have all the inputs from your device, which is awesome. You can do so much with this now. So I'm going to delete mine because I already have one set up. And let me show you this. So I've got my voice going through here. And if you go to properties, you see I have Focusrite USB 2.0, mic four. So it's, it's picking up mic four and sending it in. And I just hit okay. If you need to adjust the, the control panel itself, you can open up that up mix control for me where I can adjust settings, which is for the, my interface specifically. And you can also click on the device settings if you wanna to get to it from here as well. So once you have it, you can just go ahead and add as many as you need. So I've added two, I've added one for my computer and I've added one for my voice, which are two different microphones on the same interface. And so this is fantastic. And I'm able to run this interface using, and I'm able to run FL with the same interface, which is just, really great. That's the program I, I typically use. So now let me show you how to record multiple files so that you can take advantage of this. So now that you've got this set up, you need to set it up so you can have multiple files so that you have your computer audio separate from your voice audio. And this is really nice. So I'm going to go to file settings and I'm going to go to output because we're concerned with what we're recording here. And I'm going to go to recording. So in recording, you'll notice here there is an audio track state. So you're gonna need to make sure you're on MP4 to support this. And then when you click these audio tracks, these are all stereo audio tracks. This will basically say, hey, record 
the first audio track as one file, record the second audio track as a file, and record the third audio track as a file. I only want three files, you can go up to six, but I only use three. One is for all the audio combined, one is for my voice, and one is for the computer. And there's a reason why one is for everything combined. So now I'm gonna hit OK, but I mean, assuming you hit apply and then you hit OK. And make sure again, MP4, because not every uh, format for video supports all these. And there's like a warning right here that says that as well. So once you have that all set up, you need to right click in the mixer area and go to advanced audio properties. All my inputs show up here. I've decided I've hidden most of them in my mixer because there's just so many I'm not using. And the ones I care about are, so we see over here, we have these tracks and I care about the voice, the computer audio, and that's pretty much it. Now I have a couple other things I'm not gonna explain, but basically I want to be able to hear, when I record a file, I'm gonna wanna open it later and I might open it with the Windows Media Player with VLC or whatever the acronym is, and I'm gonna open it with Sony Vegas to edit. So in Sony Vegas, I want the audio track separate, but when I open it with a media player, I want it to play both my voice and uh, my computer. I want it to play everything. I don't want it to just play my voice because if I'm gonna watch it that way, uh, just to preview it, or maybe I'm doing something that doesn't require editing, then I want that. So I put all those on track one, that way I have that. Then on track two, I have my voice, and on track three, I have my computer audio. And with, I didn't want to stop recording, so I have a little test file here. It's an example video, and if I play it, you'll see that um, both my computer audio and my voice come through, and you're gonna hear me talk about something being muted. That's just, I'm just referencing the fact that it's muted as in it's not coming out my, my speakers, but you can still hear it because OBS is picking up the input independently. So my ASIO setup is working. So if I click this, this is an example showing that both outputs come out in the media player despite this being muted. This cool, cool. Live, 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 live. Just fine right here. And you'll hear it both in the media player because of how I've set this up. And when I drag this in Sony Vegas to do editing, you'll see that I'll have three audio files, one with both, one with just the voice, and one with just my computer audio. Cool, so let's do that. So here's Sony Vegas, and here is my recording. And if I drag it in, we see here, oh, I've got four now. Um, oh no, I've got three. I've got the, the video, and then I've got both of my audio files, this together. So if I mute these two, the player, despite this being muted, just so you can see that that one's both of them together. This one is just, uh, I believe this is just my voice. Yeah, this is my voice. The player, despite this being muted, it's still recording. So you see, it did not play that piece of audio, but if I go back and play it now, Disco live. It's separate, so I can edit them separately. If I want to turn one up or down, I can. It's not going to be a big issue. So anyways, that is how you get um, the ASIO audio to work directly with OBS. This is a phenomenal thing. It took my setup from requiring three USB interfaces to get what I want done down to just one. So definitely worth sharing. It's kind of, it's not really well known right now. So I'm hoping to get the word out that this is a thing. This is so awesome. Subscribe. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll do my best and have a blessed day.